performance. I'm not gonna lie, Blender handled itself pretty well when I was doing sculpting at pretty high resolutions. This is my Emily Blunt portrait, and you can see here that I have about 2 million and 400 points. And the sculpting feels very nice, very, very quick. I can even use a really, really big brush here. And you can see that my performance is really, really nice when it comes to sculpting. So 2 million, 400 points, no problem. Blender handles that like a champ. Now, of course, there's always a question of, well, what kind of computer do you have? And is that a factor or not? Well, my computer really isn't all that great, okay? I do have very fancy 3090 video card. Oh, my boss would have my ass. And I'm crazy, That's Jerry. Get lost, Jerry. Fuck you. But outside of that, my computer is actually a few years old. And uh, let me just bring here the task manager so that you can actually take a look at the performance graphs as we do a little bit of sculpting together there. But so even at 2,400,000 points, we're really not using all that much memory if you really think about it. And my CPU, it's uh, four years old at this point. I'm running an Intel 9,900K. Any type of modern affordable CPU should net you some very similar performance results as this here. So yeah, I do run a 3090 right now as far as the video card is concerned, but most of what you're actually seeing here is because of the video encoding that I'm recording at the same time. It's not actually coming from Blender. So you can see that on this particular computer, we have a lot of resources that are still available. So let's try and see how far can we push that then? How far can we push performance into Blender? Let me go ahead here and play off the remesh resolution. So right now we are at 0.03 centimeters, as you can see. Let me lower that here. Let's go to 0.01 and let's see how performance holds up. Through the magic of video editing, this remesh finished instantly, but I'm not gonna lie, this actually took at least a solid minute to calculate. And look at that, our memory has jumped up from 11 gigs over to 28 gigs. And our CPU, well, kind of had a bit of a workout there, but it's back at being quite low. And we are up to 21 million vertices, almost 22 million vertices in this particular case. Let's see how it looks like now. Yeah, see, this is actually, it's not too bad. Uh, I probably don't necessarily want to be sculpting at this resolution all of the time, but this is holding itself up pretty well, right? So we're at 21 million points right now. So if we're sculpting the major shapes of something at 21 million polygons, yeah, we're probably asking for trouble and it kind of makes sense that Blender would start to slow down and performance would actually be kind of terrible. But if we increase the resolution, to this degree, once we start to really get down within the little details of something, then you can see that performance within Blender is still very, very nice. Considering the fact that the CPU is four years old, I have to imagine that a more recent CPU, more recent computer, would really just have a field day sculpting at this particular resolution. So can we go even higher than that? That's a great question, right? So even though I can't actually bring this remesh value further down than 0.01, what I could actually do is to throw a multi-res modifier on top of this so that we can get even more polygons going. Now, this isn't in any way a proper workflow, okay? I'm just doing this for science. So let's go ahead here and throw in a multi-res modifier on top of this. Ooh, that's not good. Ah, that's not good. Yeah. So 21 million then, that sounds like a pretty good limit. That's actually enough to sculpt whatever it is that we would want to sculpt without using subdivisions. <sighs> but I'm not really satisfied. I think we can still push this higher than 21 million without a problem within Blender. So let's do that again. Let's see what you got. And this is where we need to start to use the multi-res modifier for sure. Now, as I've alluded to before, performance using multi-res isn't necessarily better than performance without using multi-res, depending on the settings that we have for the multi-res. I know that sounds kind of weird and counterintuitive. You would actually think that no performance should be better, especially if you're coming from ZBrush, where you know that subdivision levels in there definitely help performance. But without Blender, that's not necessarily a done deal. And I'll show you why. So this is a cube, of course. This is a very pretty cube. And we're going to subdivide this. Now, one thing I got tired of very quickly within Blender was to have to go and add a multi-res modifier manually before I could actually subdivide something to be able to sculpt on it. So I've done what any self-respecting 3D artist with way too much time on their hand does like me in this particular case. And I wrote my first plugin in Blender using Python. That sounded like a pragmatic solution, right? So I wrote a little plugin that once we are in sculpt mode, 
adds a little entry to the sculpt menu that is right there that is called multi-res add subdivide. So you can start from an object like this one here, like this particular cube. I press Control D and now I have a multi-res modifier that is at subdivision one. Press Control D again and I am increasing the subdivisions on this. So it's a very simple plugin, it really doesn't do all that much, but it does increase efficiency there by a little bit. So my goal in the future is every time that I kind of encounter something like that that I feel could be a little bit more efficient in terms of workflow. I will either write a plugin that streamlines the workflow or maybe I'll add a lot of those to the same plugin. And if you do sculpting within Blender, I want you to have it. When you click on it, it's going to subdivide your object. If your object does not currently have a multi-res modifier, it will add one for you. So here's what's interesting about the multi-res modifier and performance within Blender. You can see that I'm at about 1.5 million vertices. And to reach that, I had to subdivide this up to level nine. And so we currently have less vertices than we had when we simply had our single remesh. But this is what happens when I take my brushes and I try to sculpt on top of this cube. Look at that. Look at how terrible this is. Get the fuck out of here. Our memory really isn't that high. Our CPU here isn't that high either, but this is just god awfully slow. And so this is kind of interesting, right? Even though we have a multi-res modifier and we are at a lower polygon count than when we were working on the head that was remeshed, we're actually getting worse performance. <sighs> Say that again. Performance gradually degrades the more subdivision levels you have. If I take a cube within ZBrush and we subdivide this up until level nine, we'll have the same number of points, of course. So I have 1.5 million here. But now if I actually use my sculpting brushes, you can see how this is still very nice and very snappy here. So right now we are at level nine. And as you can see, this is simply unworkable. But if we have less subdivision levels, then we'll actually have better performance. What I need to do in this particular case is to reduce this to, let's say, subdivision level five. And then afterward, I can apply this. And now with four level of subdivisions on this particular object and at the same amount of vertices that we've had before, now we can see that my performance sculpting is pretty comparable to what I had within ZBrush. So that's a key finding. I think this is actually important. If you use a multi-res modifier, your performance will only be as good as the amount of subdivisions that you have over your object. So it's better to keep a lower amount of subdivisions here, even if that means increasing the resolution of the base mesh. Let's say that you only have access to Blender. Can you still be able to sculpt using the multi-res modifier properly? Is performance good? Well, so far, it looks pretty acceptable, right? So let's bring in a base head instead and let's continue from there. Here is the Outgang base head. This is available for all Outgang members. This is a very typical low res base head. So as much as possible, we want to be able to subdivide this and have very good performance when sculpting at very high resolutions. Let's subdivide this a few times and see how things hold up. That feels pretty good actually. If we look at performance. This is really, really nice. This sculpts just as well as what we would have within ZBrush. So performance is still holding up. We're at 3.5 million vertices and we only are using 10 gigs of memory. And you can see that our CPU is also very nice and happy right now. Even at six multi-res levels, this still holds up pretty well, right? So even though we know that performance degrades with the number of subdivisions that we have, the fact still remains that even at six, this is still really, really nice to sculpt that. Our CPU is getting a little bit more of a workout, but our memory doesn't really give all that much. If you can subdivide something up to 13 million points, you can sculpt very fine details over a surface. But all right, so we're here and we want to test how far can we go with Blender, right? How good is it really in terms of performance? So let's try another subdivision level. It is kind of slows down in a way that's uh, a little bit scary there, but uh, you know, there, there's no situation in which we would want to be doing these major volume changes at 51 million points. If we wanted to do that, we would lower the amount of subdivisions. Then we would use something like the move brush. Then we would push and pull. We would do all the big changes that we want to do with our sculpting brushes. And then afterward, we would go back up to our max subdivision levels. 
There is a slight slowdown though every time that I go up and down the subdivision levels. But still, again, this holds up surprisingly well. This is 51 million vertices and I'm sculpting with a pretty big brush size in this particular case. As we've defined before, the performance that you're getting is directly tied to the amount of polygons that you are sculpting over. So when you're sculpting over a part of a head that has a polygon count that is slightly lower than elsewhere, as it actually is the case on the cranium right now, you're gonna get better performance than if you're sculpting somewhere that is uh, denser, of course. If I sculpt over the eyes here, you can see that now this becomes unsculptable. Instead, if you're this high as a polygon count, as a vertex count, then you're probably at the point where you wanna be sculpting very fine details, very fine wrinkles, very fine skin pores. And our memory really isn't even that high. You can see that we're only using 25 gigs right now. So even someone who has a 32 gig PC could be conceivably sculpting up to 50 million points within Blender. For me, it looks very comparable to the performance that I would have within ZBrush. And there's no doubt that a lot of this is due to all those optimizations that they have done to the multi-res modifier in the newer version of Blender. I could definitely see someone sculpting a very realistic head within Blender. Let's say that you're like, okay, so I will sculpt a head within Blender and I'll create some very high frequency details in there. I'll want to be adding skin pores to my head eventually, which means that I'll want to start to use alphas at some point. I'll want to start to project alphas over the surface. Well, if you try that, you'll actually encounter a bit of a snag, but I have a workaround for you. Let me show you the problem first and then we can talk about the solution. So let me go down here within the texture here. We're simply going to create a new texture. This is the Algang pores texture that I've provided to all Algang members. And so you can see, I can actually use my standard brush here. I could go over the forehead, I could do that here. And our performance, once again, it's really, really good, right? But the problem that we're having right now is that this particular texture is getting tiled everywhere and it's not really wrapping itself nicely around the different shapes of the face. It's not following the directionality of the face, which means that we need to change our stroke. So let's go down here within stroke. I'm still on my draw brush. And instead of using this space here as our stroke method, we'll switch this over to use a drag dot. And so let's go ahead and apply our alpha on the surface. And take a look at that. Oh my God, this is like super slow. Even my cursor here, it's starting to slow down. You can see our CPU is just going through the roof right now. It's having a field day. What I found as a way to apply alphas and not have this performance slow down was instead of using the drag dot, simply switch back over to the standard space. And then really just play with the spacing value. It's as simple as that. If you take it here and you just maybe increase it to maybe 15% or so, you'll see that it's going to make it so that your brush strokes will be a little bit further apart, the little samples that you put down. And so as you drag over the surface, you can simply drag a little bit like that, as you can see, and it's going to apply a sample, one single sample of your alpha. And it's gonna do it in a way that is very nice and very snappy. So we're not getting those performance slowdowns that we've had before. Don't forget to turn on the rake so that the alpha will follow the direction of your brush stroke. I'm gonna continue my Emily Blunt head because I wanna do a fan art of the Angel of Verdun. Find me when you wake up. And so I'm gonna continue to work on the head that I have started within Blender. And my goal is to simply do the best AAA quality character that I personally can do using Blender. So that's the challenge that I'm giving myself and that you can also follow along. Of course, we will also explore other softwares than only Blender but I'm kind of going through a bit of a blender phase right now. And to be honest, I'm actually enjoying myself quite a lot. So let's keep on going. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you next time.